right, so first up here, we're going to start with Nash of Spain. Doesn't change much, or doesn't change at all. Well, a little bit, because the way uh, we play with house rules, um, compared to the normal Global War 36 setup. But um, the nationalists are supported by Germany and fascist Italy only. Um, for politics wise but the Austrians are supporting Ukraine and the Ottomans are too busy doing their own stuff so you know it's marked with the yellow pieces here yeah you got the the Baltics uh, not Baltics the Balearic Islands um, money wise um, there's a little bit of glare we have a uh, it's like a clear sheet over this and there's a light giving a glare but Two bucks in what would be the considered the capital. Two bucks down south here, and then a buck here in Morocco, and a buck in the uh, Balearic Islands, which is making a little less money than the Republicans. So they will need support from Germany and fascist Italy in order to win the civil war. If the fascists win the Civil War, they'll be um, more fascists in Europe than communists. And it'll put another enemy right at France's uh, weak underbelly here. Hey, okay. who's next? Silver Legion of America. Alright, so America starts in a three-way Civil War here. The Silver Legion of America is represented by the upside-down... Austro-Hungarian chips, which are the yellow back. We are using German pieces to represent uh, the Silver Legion of America. They also have the Great Plains on the other side. Um, I guess I can walk over to show that. So, there it is. It has a major factory in it, and they did get the light tank. So I'm going to go back over here because this is where most of uh, the U.S. is for the Silver Legion. Uh, they start with a huge Air Force and Navy buff, um, but they are making less money than the normal United States. So if I was the Silver Legion of America, I may try to team up with one of the other Americas to wipe out the other one to get some more money and then go after the other guy, whoever's left. Uh, they can be supported by Germany, um, the Baltic Confederation, uh, Italy. Uh, they can be supported by China, technically, because in either scenario, China's fascist. They can be supported by the Ottomans and the Austrians and the Middle Africans, which is a, another new country in this setup. Okay, who's next? Germany. All right, Germany. See if I can get this. Might be better from down here. We'll move it out of your way. No, you're good. All right. So Germany starts with a huge buff. You want to hold it for me? Sure, that'd be great. You can then go go over there. Let me get around you, please. No. So Germany starts with a huge buff in general pieces. Um, we had to remove uh, probably a. A third of the Air Force, because um, we in the the scenario it starts in thirty nine for Germany, whereas everyone else is thirty six. And not only did we remove a third of the Air Force, we also demoted all the medium tanks to light tanks, as well as mechanized to motorized to try and weaken them. Uh, they do start with a aircraft carrier in this scenario, um, but Germany gets hit hard. Uh, I haven't said this yet, but there is a stock market crash in which e the damage in Berlin to the stock market crash is represented by dice rolls. So the damage in Berlin also affects all of the other countries around the world other than uh, the minor countries. I'm going to take that back. Uh, countries that are in a civil war, um, the miners like puppets are still affected. 
Uh, so what happens is Germany's first turn, they do their normal buying if they decide to. Uh, they, they're not attacking anyone. They can't annex anyone. Um, non-combat movement, I guess. But, I mean, I guess you'd want to do non-combat movement. And then right after non-combat movement, I'm pretty sure is what I wrote down. I don't remember. I have to read through it. But basically, before they place their units and after, after they've already bought their pieces, um, the stock market will crash and they will roll a d12 for every tile in their home country, which now includes the parts of Poland that are uh, represented by pink lines. Um, each tile that has a monetary value of four or higher, you roll a d12 for damage. And each tile that's less than four, you roll a d6. And you can't start building pieces. Well, you can't start building new pieces until all of the damage is fixed. Um, you could continue pieces that are on the production chart. That goes for any nation. Um, uh, there is a loan mechanism to where if your nation drops below the peacetime income, and what that means is, let's just go for Germany, because they will have to use it on their first turn. Germany will roll the, the dice. Each tile is damaged. So let's say they spent all their 20 bucks on pieces before the stock market crash, which is pretty dumb, but it's pop, it's doable because they can still buy pieces at that point in time. Um, <clears throat> if the next turn comes around, well, when the next turn comes around, then they have no money being produced because everything's damaged um, and their peacetime income is zero. So what will happen is they'll roll a d12 and that they'll pocket that face value as a loan. A loan is a number you have to keep track of because you'll have to pay it back. This is, an op this is not optional. You'll have to pay it back before you can start purchasing units again. The loan money is strictly just for repairing tiles. So it, that goes for any nation that goes below their peacetime income. Um, peacetime income can increase, though, um, especially for nations that get peacetime bonuses. Like, for example, uh, the UK gets a bunch of peacetime bonuses because technically it, the Austria annexation bonus they will get because it is in the Axis slash Reichspact powers already to start the game, so they will get that automatically. That will also go for when Al Albania is annexed by the Italians. <clears throat> the fascist it Italians still get their normal uh, it Italian political uh, objectives, such as Ethiopia and Albania. However, the Republican, or should I say the Communist, Italians do not get those bonuses. Uh, but they do still share the same wartime bonuses with regarding to uh, money. Um... Let's see who's next here. I think that basically covers it for Germany. Do you think I missed anything? For Germany? Uh, I don't think so. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Pacific okay. stuff. So Germany does retain all of their Pacific colonies. Um, to in, uh, Can you show Hong Kong real quick? Uh, actually, just zoom out a little bit. Yep. Uh, a little more up. There you go. So Germany would have a... Uh, I guess you would call it a naval base up in uh, the north of Henan, which is, uh, see where that cruiser is? Yeah, it's north there in that little peninsula that China has. Um, it would be there, technically, if they kept it from, uh, well, that's where it would have been in World War I. Um, but instead, to represent that, I gave them Hong Kong instead, as if they took it from the UK in World War I. And, um, so they, they have a small navy out here. It's consisting of two subs. Uh, they could volunteer the German, uh, infantry there in Hong Kong to China. Because China is a member of the Reichspact starting 1942. So they could, and, and they're also fascist. They, they could send them a volunteer unit. 
It would have to arrive at the nearest city or at a port. Um, so that is an option to help out China somewhat. Alright, so that, that seems it for Germany. The biggest army, probably the second biggest navy, and definitely the biggest air force to start the game. However, that will change because of the crash. Alright, who's next here? Baltic Confederation. Baltic Confederation is a new nation. Yeah, gotta squeeze through here. It's consisting of all the Baltic countries, Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia, the capital being uh, Lithuania. They have the they start off small, but they will grow through political alliances, and that's the same thing as let's say America aligning a country down in uh, South Africa or Central, sorry, South America and Central America. So they can align any of the Nordic or Scandinavian countries. Uh, it's a free roll a turn, one roll per turn, and they can pay $3 to increase their chances. Their chances start off 50-50, and as they align more nations, it drops. So it'll be better to align with money later than earlier, I guess you could say, if you want to save money. But if, if Estonia, or sorry, if the Baltic Confederation um, manages to align Finland early, that prevents Russia from attacking Finland. <clears throat> if Russia attacks Finland before Finland is aligned to the Baltic Confederation... Um, then the F Swedes and the Norwegians will automatically align to the Baltic Confederation. So that, they could only align Denmark then after that, which will put them at about 10 bucks. Um, they start with a, a, a weak navy, um, but in that region, Russia doesn't have much, and if they align, let's say Sweden or even Finland, they'll gain at least one or possibly two cruisers, which is very close to the amount of ships that Russia has to start with. And they can also support the Silver Legion of America. They could also support fascist Spain and China. All right, let's go to the next country. And I'm pretty sure it's Russia. Or it's probably the neutral control, but no one. Uh, Probably in Spain, alright. <clears throat> Again, nothing changes much <clears throat> aside from the, the money values you see there for our house rule. Um, the way we play it. Because Spain is... Let's say Spain joins the war <clears throat> in a normal game. They only make two bucks. So they, they, they really can't hold their own against anybody. So Spain, I think the total net worth of Spain is around 12 bucks. Maybe 13. Um, Republican Spain has the upper hand in the Civil War uh, because France is right next to it. So they can, you know, easily send two volunteers and, uh, sorry, two land volunteers and one air volunteer. And then Italy, or sorry, Republican Italy, or should I say Socialist Italy, could also send their mountain infantry which will be brutal defense in Spain because it's mostly mountains. And, uh, I mean, they, they don't have an airplane yet, but if the Republican Spain wanted to, they could send an airplane. And they also have the railroads that connect everything to Spain. So they technically don't even need a port or the city, in fact, to send the volunteers. Um, that's really it for Spain. Uh, they make more money, like I said earlier, than... Uh, sorry. Republican Spain makes more money than fascist Spain. Um, they can get uh, volunteers and money from Russia, but since Russia lost its ports down in the Black Sea uh, due to Ukraine and Transcaucasian Union, the only available route to send... Well, there's two routes, but the only decent route will be to send troops from Leningrad with this transport all the way around. Um, they could make it around, but it'll be a bunch of turns. It might not be worth it. 
the best chance they have is probably to land a plane in France um, from Leningrad and then from France to get to uh, an air base in Spain for Republican Spain. All right, let's go to the next country here. Communist States of America. All right, that consists... I'm going to bring it around over here. Communist States of America consists of basically the Pacific Coast except for this one tile up here. They have the second strongest navy. However, it's the strongest navy on this side because the Union only has, well, two surfer ships and one sub on this side. Uh, they don't have any aircraft to start with, though. So, if they attack this uh, American fleet, America could scramble this tactical bomber, which would um, probably thwart any attacks. Well, not any, but it would make it more difficult. Uh, they start with the weakest amount of money they're getting, but they're also probably the hardest to take a hold of. Uh... If uh, fascist, uh, sorry, the Silver Legion of America focuses on taking out the communists because they're the weakest, they would get all the money from them, but then they'd also lose a lot of territory on the East Coast because the USA is right there. Um, so they really can't focus entirely on the communists. So I truly don't know how the, the Civil War, the three-way Civil War will go, but it is bound to be interesting. Um, communist states of America can be supported by Russia, France, uh, Soviet, well, yeah, Soviet Italy, no, sorry, Socialist Italy, um, possibly Republican Spain if it becomes a major and the, the war still going on, the, the American Civil War still going on, uh, and that's about it for political allies. Keep this open here. All right, Russia is the last for this area. Russia starts off weaker than normal simply because Ukraine exists and uh, they lost the Ca the Transcaucasian Union area, um, which is worth six bucks. And there's there's quite a bit of pieces. They also lost, well, not not lost. It's just delayed the uh, their navy in the Black Sea uh, because that is now Transcaucasian. Um, Soviet unions could, like I said, support Republican Spain, but it'll be difficult. They probably have a better chance of supporting the communist states of America because in the setup, they do start with a transport right here, and it will get there within three turns, which is better than nothing. Um, let's see what else. Uh, if you can get a plane to... The east coast, uh, I think this would be east, right? Yeah. Yeah, the east coast of Russia. There's a possibility of it getting to Hawaii because there is an air base there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a possible with a strategic. Um, uh, there might be another way, a faster way. It might just be able to get to the coast right away. I don't know. I'd have to count, but it is doable. <clears throat> Even with an aircraft carrier would be doable, but they don't have one. Um, to start off, they are, they, are, they are pretty weak with money. They don't lose money from the loss of territories for their starting um, income, as in, pretty sure they're only making six bucks a turn. Let me double check. They're only making eight bucks a turn. So because they lost these territories, they're still making eight bucks a turn at peacetime. Um... That could increase depending on um, peacetime bonus incomes. Um, they can declare war on Ukraine because uh, Ukraine is a minor without m any immediate repercussions. Um, how do I put this? Ukraine is friendly with uh, the Austro-Hungarians. And Ukraine will align to Austro-Hungary if Austro-Hungary is at war. doesn't matter who they're at war with. So Russia could be 
could ignore helping France entirely <clears throat> and decide to go after the Ukrainians to take territory. But if that happens, uh, it'll probably be more than likely the Austro-Hungarians will declare war on France and that will immediately force Ukraine to join Austro-Hungary, which will pull Russia into the war with Germany and Austria and probably the Ottomans as well, as well as the Baltic Confederation at that point. Uh, who's next on the list? Japan. All right, Japan is democratic in this scenario, so their political uh, views would match that of the UK's. As in, they can't declare war on any countries in the region that have not declared war on other minor. So that goes for China, because they're a major, uh, and Russia, because they're a major. Um, they, they're they democratic, so they could support uh, normal um, the, the United States, and that's the only people they can really support. I don't really recommend supporting them too much, because... China is starting United, um, and they will be declaring war the, the normal time that Japan would declare war on China, so <clears throat> second half of 37. And, uh, you know, the bonuses for Japan that the Allies would get for peacetime will still apply, so the bigger the fleet for Japan, the more money to the Entente, the Allies in this scenario. So it might be a good idea to build up a, a big fleet because that will definitely help the Entente. However, China's going to be hard to take. Um, they start with a huge army and they don't start with a lot of money. They only start making six bucks a turn for peacetime. But once they're at wartime, they will be making almost the same as Japan. So it's probably be... It'll probably be in Japan's best interest to build a large land army. Because if they use their navy against the coastline, I don't know if you can tell, but there are uh, coastal guns that those black um, fortifications are. Those are coastal guns in each tile for this scenario. Basically, China, once it unified, um, started industrializing, and instead of building... Uh, an army they built coastal defenses. That's good. All right, so here we have the Austro-Hungarian Reich. They start probably the best nation in Europe, um, simply because they won't be affected by the stock market crash as much as Germany is, because they won't have every tile damaged. They start with a relatively nice-sized land army, and they get a bunch of uh, bonuses for their land army, such as the artillery can also pair with cavalry and motorized, and the motorized and the cavalry will go up one for attack, just as infantry would normally, and that's their only uh, special ability. They start off making... I don't know, can you see in the packet real quick? <laughs> Twelve. Oh, yeah, 12. Well, well, they started with 10 bucks, but they started making $12 a turn. That will be affected because of the stock market crash. But they should be able to, to repair the damage within two years. They start off with a semi-large navy for the region. Um, basically, the largest navy in the Mediterranean would probably be between France and the Ottomans. The Austrians, not so much. The Austrians, if I were them, I'd probably focus on an air force because they don't have much of an air force. And uh, they're probably the best country in Europe to start with. Alright, next we have UK and its puppets. UK gets a special setup. Basically, the lore goes, uh, after World War One, their navy was demolished. And they were set restrictions as to how much of a land force they could keep. So they start off with a broken navy is probably the best way to put it. But they are rebuilding. They still have their normal production chart for 36 set up. 
normal facilities, just a weakened army and navy. It's in uh, Britain's best interest to support uh, the United States because if they can get the United States <coughs> on their side uh, later in the game, it it will definitely help uh, with possible lend lease or even volunteers. Um, the good thing about the Entente is uh, not only does the, the master, as in England or probably the UK would be a better term, the puppets can also send volunteer units. Um, so the U, the USA, could receive two land units and one air unit as volunteers from each uh, Entente power, I guess you put it, including the miners. So that'd be India, Australia, uh, in this scenario, South Africa, and uh, the Canadians. Canadians will probably be really important to the United States to help them defend. The UK probably wants to build up its fleet and just go from there. It's, it's going to be a slow struggle, but they do start making off more money than usual. Simply because of pre-existing political uh, actions, such as Austria is already part of the Axis. Um, uh, Albania can be annexed pretty early by Italy. So that's an extra two bucks, and I think there's a couple more in there that they get early. Um, and that's really it for the UK. They... They did manage to keep uh, the Suez Canal. It'll be hard to defend from the Ottomans and the Italians and the Middle Africans. It's not looking too great for them in the Mediterranean, let's put it that way. Fleet's barely there. Anyways, let's move on to India. Let's just go to the puppets in general. So let's start with India. There is a new rule in the game um, to prevent Britain from just having the uh, uh, miners it controls, as in their puppets, sending their fleets to reinforce Britain. Um, if there are sh puppet ships or navy that are five tiles, well, they can be up to five tiles away from their homeland. So, for example... Let's go with the British, uh, the Indian transport in season 84. That can move five tiles away from uh, uh, any land tile in India. So it could go and help support the British in the Mediterranean, because that was within five tiles. Or it could go and help Japan, um, possibly blockading ports or by sending volunteers. If at any point a ship is more than five tiles, it must continue to a British uh, harbor of some sort, whether it's a naval base or a shipyard. And that will be providing a debuff to Britain. It'll become Br uh, Britain's peace, um, but Britain will have to pay money for it. <coughs> so be careful as to how you move your ships. It, it, it'll give you some restraints. Um, let's go down to the Australians. Uh, a house rule I always do is I give them one interwar fighter. That's another house rule piece. Interwar fighters are not standard for V2, but I believe they were added in V3. Um, <coughs> they uh, move three... Attack and defend at four and cost seven dollars. They're they're rather weak fighters, but they are an air force that the my mostly made for the miners, so they could have something to defend their skies. Um, you know, nothing really changes for the Australians. They can't really support the Mediterranean yet because if that happens, the UK will be f forced to take a debuff. Um, I mean, the pieces will still arrive there, but they'll become British and they'll no, no longer be Australian. And, you know, like I said, the UK will still get the debuff. 
they may only be able to send volunteers to Japan in that in that case. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they they could send volunteers to Japan. Um, that is a possibility. But other than that, they're sitting there and collecting money and building up troops. Let's now go to South Africa. <clears throat> South Africa is weak, um, needless to say. They do get a bunch of peacetime in war time. Well, not a bunch of bonuses, but they do get some peacetime bonuses. They get a bunch of wartime bonuses to try and match Middle Africa's money. Because it's going to be hard for them to survive once war breaks out. They start with uh, a transport and destroyer on the production chart. So they theoretically could send volunteers to Japan or America. It will take a little bit of time though. But I guess anything helps for both uh, wars. <coughs> At, uh, the South Africans really should probably just hold, try and hold on to their territory as best they can and provide a uh, a front in Africa to keep the Italians and the Middle Africans from moving up towards Europe. Let's now go to Canada. Canada's split in half, obviously. Like I said earlier in the video, Canada should immediately support the United States with volunteer units. It'll be extremely helpful. They could also uh, have Britain. Britain will still have the ability to use this factory. So instead of having Britain ship units over, they could immediately build units in that factory as long as there are available slots left. Uh, you know, if Can Canada built anything. And uh, they could get volunteers even faster there through, for Britain, I mean. Um, Canada will have to, you know, help defend. The UK, which is within five tiles, so it, it they won't have to. UK won't have to take a debuff, um, and the Canadians won't use lose their ships. On the Pacific side, there's not much they can do at all. Uh, they do have one cruiser, however, I don't even think it could do anything at the start of the game. You'd have to wait till wartime. Because if it, like I said, if it moves five tiles away, this might be one ship Britain could request because it's being useless right now. So that might be one ship the UK would want to request uh, because they can't use it. Uh, as in their front with America, uh, just, it'd just be a way to keep sending pieces over for uh, lend lease or for volunteer units. Um. I believe that's it for the Entente. <laughs> All right, I just quickly want to say here, um, with regards to the uh, puppets of Britain, if they want to send Lend-Lease or volunteer units to the United States, um, transports moving outside of the uh, five tiles away from their uh, coast tiles, that is allowed without the UK receiving a debuff. Um, it would still be the South Africans, uh, let's say South Africa in that case, it would still re uh, remain South African transport. It would not be forced to become a UK transport. Alright, so next up is the Ottoman Empire. The weakest, well, I say the weakest, it's not the weakest. The weakest major power in Europe. Uh, like the lower states, uh, they start with rebels in Iran, 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 <laughs> Iran, and uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, so they will have to take those tiles to, you know, end the rebellions. But they don't start with much that can reach. Not only that. If you look at Iran, it's all mountains. It's it's going to be hard. Um, they also start with rebellions in uh, these two tiles, which will cause damage similar to the stock market crash, but this damage will keep happening until 1940. 
and if the Ottomans don't keep a certain amount of land units in these tiles to quell the rebellions, it could get out of hand. And they could, they may have to build a, uh, a ton of... Well, they, they may only be repairing damages the whole time. Like, like I said earlier, way earlier, back talking about Germany, a nation cannot build p new pieces until all damaged tiles are repaired. So that's going to be a huge issue for the Ottomans. They do start with a large navy, which is nice. But they don't start with much of a military. Uh, they have a, a somewhat of an air force. <coughs> Let's move on to France. Alright, so France gets a little bit of a buff in the scenario. They start with what uh, technically six light tanks, but... Uh, and a, a, a piece that we use is called an interwar tank, much like the interwar fighter. Uh, that's represented by these pieces. They are the, if I'm correct, the R35 uh, interwar tanks. And interwar tanks are attack at three, defend at three. Uh, they cost three. So they're, they're a basic attack unit, better than infantry, but worse at defense. And they can be upgraded to light tanks, I believe, starting 1939. That's their only buff they really get. Uh, the house rules state that once France repairs all its damage, or starting, I think it's the second half of 37, uh, whichever comes first, it'll start to do a mobilization roll, I think it's called. Let me double check that for you. It is a rearmament roll, my bad. Um, they will start that earlier than normal simply to get more money to them before uh, war because ideally I'd want France to be able to match the western front of Germany. Um, uh, France still retains the Maginot Line, so it's probably not in the best interest for Germany to attack through the Maginot. Uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands will immediately align to UK if attacked, which would immediately pull in UK at war early. Um, so it's not France's, it's not in France's best interest to, to get even more nations at war with it, because UK can end up going to war with either the Reichspact or the, the Common Turn. Um, they, France could go through Switzerland, not recommended either because of the mountain infantry. Um, their best entrance is probably to attack through Italy and defend Lorraine, build up a navy, and uh, definitely help, uh, commun uh, sorry, Republican Spain and get an extra ally in that region because, uh, any more money that you can get would be, would be better. For your team. Alright, let's. Uh, Free France will still exist, actually. Let's say Paris Falls. Free France will still exist, but it'll just be a, a common, uh, uh, communist Free France, essentially. Uh, you still do the normal dice rolls for, for ships and for the colonies, except Syria is no longer French. It is actually Ottoman, so that doesn't count. It'll just be Madagascar. Well, you don't even roll for Madagascar, you roll for the Indochina region, and you roll for North Africa. But Free France will still exist. All right, next up is the Italian Socialist Republic, the northern half of Italy. They start with the biggest navy that was left over from Italy. We did split up the navy uh, to where the Republicans had the navy and the fascists, sorry, not the Republicans, the Socialists had the navy, the major navy, and the fascists had the air force to try and balance it um, they do have a major factory up in turin still their best interest is to support spain because um they will get a one dollar bonus for their side of spain winning it goes for both both italy's if if whoever wins in spain the let's say the fascists win in spain then the fascist italian will get an extra buck if the Republican Spain wins, then the Republican Spain will get an extra buck. So it's, it's in their best interest, too. 
Um, as well, uh, the reason why I say that is because another house rule I forgot to mention. Depending on who wins in Spain, the correspond or the, the related Italy or the corresponding Italy would get the Balearic Islands as a reward for helping their side of the Spanish Civil War win. All right, next is the fascist Italy. Like I said, they have the weaker navy of the two, but they have the air force. They still start at war with Ethiopia or Abyssinia, however you want to call it. And they still have the ability to annex uh, Albania. So eventually they will be making more money than the uh, socialist Spain, but they start off weaker. Um, it might be in their best interest to support uh, fascist Spain. Italy. Oh. Yeah, fascist Spain, yeah. Because uh, in the scenario, Austrians and the Ottomans cannot support fascist Spain. <clears throat> it would also open up another front on France, which would be helpful for the Reichspact. All right, moving on to Middle Africa. Now, Africa. I, I explain it in the lore, but basically after World War One, Germany took a bunch of French and German colonies and were able to get their World War One wishes of a African colony that spans uh, east to west. And this is the only country in the game that can build railroads that will actually increase their monetary value of the territory. However, it is only a special ability to the Middle Africans. Middle Africa probably won't be building up so much. Um, they'll probably start with their industry, um, such as the railroads, because for each railroad you build, you get an extra dollar a turn, um, and that will add up, especially later in the game, because there are a bunch of tiles you can build a railroad in. So they probably won't have the biggest uh, military in the region. It'll probably be Italy or the Ottomans. But they can put a lot of pressure on Britain, especially... Um, South Africa. Next up we have China. China starts united in this scenario. They consist of China, which is the nationalist, Communist China, which is nationalist, Guangxi clique, which is the lower part, nationalist, Yunnan, which is nationalist, and Zibi San Ma, or Zibi San Ma, which is in the, the uh, out here, that's nationalist, and then this warlord over here is also nationalist. They were able to industrialize earlier than nor than you know, after World War II. Um, like I said, and when talking about Japan, instead of focusing on upgrading their military, they went straight for defending their coastline because they wanted to attack Japan to retake uh, northern Manchuria. Well, Manchuria in general. Uh, if the Chinese manage to push Japan off of the continent in Asia, or China in that case, uh, they will sign a white peace with Japan. So it is in their best interest to attack as fiercely as possible and take those tiles out. <laughs> they can start building aircraft, tanks, artillery, ships even. They want you for the start of the game but it's totally up to the player's discretion so usa is still enthralled in a civil war a three-way civil war america is probably the one who's hurt most uh they have the largest mil uh land military by one unit which is nothing uh their navy is split completely in half and they have a weakened navy on the atlantic side simply because the Germans have a huge air force to start. The only air force the Americans have is in the Pacific, which will help with the uh, communist states of America. That's if they choose to scramble it in defense of their ships. Or maybe they'll decide to keep it and move it to the Atlantic side. Um, they do make the most money. So once it is their turn... Um, 
Not that they'll have a lot of money to start. They'll have two bucks because the six bucks for America will be split evenly. Two, two, two. <clears throat> and uh, the turn after that is when they'll have the most amount of money, obviously. So it, it's in America's best interest to hold out because they will outproduce both nations, uh, well, both uh, Silver Legion of America and the Communist States of America. They will easily outproduce them.